Well, how do you think I feel? Ron Fez Show, 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ. 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ. Fez, I didn't know this. We're losing a little rooster. The rooster's heading back. Uh, tomorrow is his uh, last day is with us. That He's went going fast. back to Missouri. Well, you know, we are in August. Uh, I don't know when the colleges go back, but uh, the kid doesn't have forever to waste his time. Rooster, you taking off uh, tomorrow? Uh, yeah, actually, tomorrow evening, right after the show. Uh, you started Gangbusters, and then the then you've kind of fallen off the show here for a while. Uh, yeah, I kind of fell into the background and started like doing lots of paperwork. Earl had me on some thing for about a week and a half. So yeah. Your first couple of days, I'm like, oh, this kid's smooth on the air. He's very, very comfortable. And then we never saw you again. I think it was like right after the break. I started really hitting on all cylinders, and then I kind of had my break. And then after that, nothing. Break was a mistake for you. Yeah, I probably just should have stayed oh. around here, came yeah. in by myself, <laughs> and just tried to keep a groove going. Uh, Earl, did you feel like uh, you were a good uh, boss for this kid over the summer? Yeah, I tried to impart whatever I could to how him. Was, how was Earl as a boss? Um, I, he was good when I saw him around. Pitsy, more or less, was my instructor, for, I guess, throughout this entire thing. Oh, boy, Earl. Pitsy will be your memory of that summer of 07. Yeah. I'd exactly say the so. The summer of Asian girls. Exactly. Yeah. So that will be my memory, Pitsy how many, and Asian girls. How many did you get all together? All together, uh, after this weekend, I had four. Four. So that's four more than anyone else in the staff has gotten laid. Four more times. Congratulations. Uh, how many of them will you say, yes, I'd let my friends see her? Um, half, 50%. Right. Not bad. Two of them, okay. Not bad. I have never had a 50% rule in my life and, that uh, I would say, even though I'm banging you, I want to walk down the street with you. Unfortunately, uh, Bronx Johnny actually got to see one of the ones I wouldn't want anyone to see. Yeah. Because she showed up actually at bar nine. Don't worry about that, because Bronx Johnny's got nothing to brag about <laughs> himself. And most of the time, he runs out. Uh, he's not coming in this week. He's... Uh, uh, roofing, uh, I don't know what that means. Just you know, doing roofing all or what? But he wrote me a note that said that he's roofing. All right, so tomorrow we having a big goodbye party for the kid. You have a nice send off for a rooster, yes. What? Where's your food coming from? Um, I haven't made up my mind yet, but it's gonna be high class. So far, we've been pretty high class. It's, really? We're gonna stay high class. Wow, I'm Very excited. Interesting. Very interesting. We've had all pizza right. and soul food. But this, it was good soul food, though. Though. Well, maybe when it was hot. I don't know. I got to it much <laughs> later. When it tasted more like roadkill. Why don't you just have me eat straight out of uh, the trash can? Don't. Why don't you say your lunch is in the trash can? When I I'm not going to feed you garbage. No. Yeah. Not at all. Why don't you do this? Uh, send Pepper for it now. That way we uh, have a little party during the show tomorrow and the food's 24 hours old. <laughs> just leave the cake out. Why don't you start bleeding some chickens and hanging them from the doorways? <laughs> Fess says, ooh, like we're really going to have to eat it. I don't think that would be a very good idea. Okay, thank you, Mr. Able to Roll with a Joke. God, you're awkward. So, Wiki's coming to talk to you today? Uh, I believe all of us, yes. Mm, so, today starts the interrogation. Yeah, we, uh, we get the hot lights today. This is going to be like that Tom Cruise movie where Wiki is Tom Cruise coming in from Washington down here to talk to the Marines about why a death took place. <laughs> no good men. Yeah, it's, it's going to be very uncomfortable, yeah. Earl, how do you feel about this kid? He rolls in from Missouri, bangs four chicks over the summer, and you've gotten zero. Hey, he's good. What can I say? No, and he, you're bad. That's and I'm awful. <laughs> no, I, I'll acknowledge the fact that I'm just god-awful. He's a good-looking kid, too. Somebody brought up to me the other day that they believe that... Uh, Earl is not attracted to either sex. What is that called? Oh, asexual. Asexual. And then that got my head spinning of how many asexual people I know from this show. And it's a phenomenal amount. Like, even like in society in general, I don't think you find very many, but within the confines of this show, I immediately can think of at least three, right, four. Write them down for me, uh, Rooster. This is going to be whether you have a passing grade or not. <laughs> If this is, it all comes down to that one exam where the professor has to see whether you got it. This is the final? Yeah. Who's asexual on the show? And really, when I mean, you look at this kid, four over the summer normally would not make you a stud. But around this fucking femme crew, he's Will Chamberlain. 
<laughs> He's turned into Will Chamberlain now. All right, he has turned in his asexual list. <sighs> now, this is for people. Now, I was even uh, including listeners that we hang out with. Oh, wow. So, so now, it, yeah. yeah. Uh, Actually, I With have to that, go. I will triple your list. But he's picked four that either are part of this <laughs> show or they're interns. I might four not. on staff. And guess what? Rooster gets an A for the semester. <laughs> wow. Because I agree. Now... Uh, you're four, you went intimately, and you should have had that up top. I know, because I, I really would like to come in tomorrow and enjoy my last day, because yeah. now I'm starting to get worried. Yeah. All right, so, uh, yeah, seal that up, put it in your wallet, don't let anybody see it. But four people who come to work on a daily basis, he has picked out as being a asexual with this show. Who I feel I've gotten to know very well over the yeah. last few months, so... I wouldn't consider myself asexual. Yes, you're asexual. How do you know you're on the list? Exactly. <laughs> no, it, it, you said that. It, it, it was, I don't know, this implication that I'm asexual. You I know hardly... that you're asexual, and you know that we were talking about you. <laughs> was Girl, I've known you for seven years, right? Yes. The only women that I've seen you with is ones I've shoved you into, and you've taken out for an awkward night, and that was the end of it. But then I don't think that makes me asexual. But I you're mean, not having sex. You're not attracted to women I, or men. I'm, I'm attracted to women. I'm no way attracted to men at all. But I'm definitely attracted to women. You have the same batting average with men that you have with women. That means that you're asexual. I'm, I'm batting 200 with women. I'm batting 0, zero, zero with men. I have no desire. You're not no batting desire. 200 with women. You'd be batting 200 with women if you were 16. You're 37. And this kid's banging more women over the last couple months than you have your entire life. Like, how many seasons ago was that, Earl? I mean... Yeah. <laughs> a little season ago, yes. You're uh, batting 200 in the minors, and that's the Little League minors, <laughs> where the eight and nine-year-olds play. Okay, I'm more like 079 or something like that. Yeah, you are. You're like fucking Gil Hodges in that one... Uh, in the World 52 Series. World Series, yeah. But I, I I can't explain it. It's just the yes, way I am. Yes, you can. You're asexual. It's explained. And you and you're one of four. You're one of four of what I like to call the Ron and Fez Beatles of asexuality. <laughs> Matt, Matt, you're on Ron and Fez. Hey, buddy. Yeah. I, I think Earl got caught in a lie yesterday. Did he say the food would be there at three? At that time, it was probably sitting back in the corner, just getting cold and nasty. That's what he thought when I said, Earl, I want the food here at three. He thought, well, that gives me hours to let it sit in the corner instead of trying to line it up so the food got here exactly at 3 o'clock. The weird thing about this little list is only Casey has kept Dave from being asexual, so that's amazing. So you're locked mm -hmm. out. You're an ace. I want all you guys, the, the Beatles of asexuality, to look at Dave as, as your Elvis <laughs> to show that it can be done. All you need is one. I can't believe you aced this test, Rooster. I know, I'm so I'm really proud of myself. Here's uh, Mike. Mike, you're on Ronnie Fez. Hey, Ronnie. Uh, just because you think something's attractive, like just because we're all thinks another girl's attractive, you have to pursue that girl. You want to have sex with her. You want to, you know, you got to want pussy. He just doesn't want pussy. He might think something's got nice tits or an ass, but you got to really want that person. Yeah, I mean, just to be able to recognize that someone is pretty, you know, gay guys normally uh, say, oh, that woman is gorgeous, and they're, you know, they're attracted in that sense, just not sexually attracted. So I know that you know how to look at a woman and go, that's a beautiful woman, but you're not going to pursue. And this is the oddest thing of all that throws me into asexuality. You uh, don't even jerk off. I mean, yeah, I went for a while without doing it. I kind of did over the break. You're a liar. I'm not lying. How can you, how can you kind of jerk off? Well, I yeah. did. I admit, I did. Because everyone was busting my chops about not doing so it. So you have felt like you had... All right, this is what, you, what you're laying in bed. You're not feeling anything. Then you went... The guys are teasing me. I better play with my <laughs> well, dick. You don't think well, that comes across? Well, odd? Well, well, it was a little bit more than that. I was... I, I kind of took a step back and I asked myself, I was like, wow, I don't even do that anymore. And I'm like, 
it's perfectly normal. It's perfectly healthy, and Ron and, Fez, and it's something that I wanted to. So you forced yourself to masturbate. I didn't force myself. It was thinking just of the guys on the show and things that we talked. <laughs> Hardly, about. no, not that at all. That is exactly what happened. Not at all. Would you have thought of it without the show? I wouldn't. I mean, once it was brought up, I was like, Ew. "Wow!" It's like, "Wow!" I don't yeah, even do that anymore. Yeah. I mean, it's just all these things that aren't. I can't believe you're bragging about jerking off as a sexual conquest. I'm not yeah. saying it. I'm not, it I'm not bragging about it. <laughs> I'm not <laughs> bragging about it. Not at all. It's just... You even had so, to psych yourself up for it. Like, you had to give yourself motivation. It was peer pressure masturbation. I bet you had headphones on and were listening <laughs> to a Ron and Fez air check. It's not <laughs> having any sexual... we were yelling at you and you're just jacking off. <laughs> oh, my God, they're so mad. They're right. I'm dirt. I'm nothing. So what did you think about it, Earl? Oh, uh, wow. Civil War? <laughs> not, not the Civil War. <laughs> <laughs> the end. The end of the Civil War. Not the end of the Civil War. It's just this... I don't know. It's just... You just do it. You don't really... You don't, th you don't think of anything. Well, you think about, you know, old, you know, old relationships, old girlfriends, well, stuff like that. You don't like have that. any. No, I don't... Remember, he doesn't go back that far. I don't think he did it at all. I don't think I so. I think he's trying to lie and say he wants to be. I swear to God. He's now lying about getting himself. <laughs> and has he Why am I going to lie about something like that? I'm telling the truth. He hasn't even mentioned, like, the jizzing part. And if yeah. you had masturbated in so long, you would have gallons of, of semen. So he hasn't even mentioned that, which makes me to believe he's lying. I'm not that. I'm not as sick and descriptive as you are, Dave. I'm just trying to. Is embarrassing. Because it's all gross, right, Teal? I, it's not gross at all. It's I mean, disgusting. it's disgusting. I'm just not as you know, for lack of a better word, forthcoming about. He came into a Ziploc bag, <laughs> <laughs> put that in a file. He files all of this. What are you gonna do with it? With the public he, file? He just wants it out. He does oh. not want it to. Everything grosses him out. You know, I'll admit I, it was pretty. Murky? <laughs> Not murky or dark. There was a fucking carp in it. It's been so long. There's a fucking carp in it, you disgusting prick. Yeah, it was. It, there was a lot of built up. It was See, built up. A second ago he said it wasn't. And he's just going no. by what Dave said. No, and the You're fucking John from Cincinnati. No, there was a, you, the release felt good. I'm you not like, what? I'm not back. I mean, the release felt good. I don't know, Butchie, instead. <laughs> I don't know. Well, I'm not going to deny it. it didn't feel good. It felt great. What do you got, buddy? How did you jerk off? Like, uh, what type of motion do you use? Did you use lube? I mean, you're leaving a... He I stuck his dick in a French hen. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't know what to do. He cried the whole time he was doing it. <laughs> ah, dirty! They made me! Mr. B, I know he's lying because... Everything? Because his mouth's fucking moving. We've That's had, why he's lying. And we, we've had, like, pictures of good-looking chicks as, as screensavers on his computer, fully clothed. And he makes them, he makes us change that screensaver. He's uncomfortable with, like, Jamie Presley in a gown on his computer. Yeah, I agree with that. And that, and I've just never heard him make even a comment about this person's ungodly beautiful or anything like that. So, never. Never. I'm just never that... I'm not that forthcoming I about it. I heard say someone ones. was beautiful, Cedric the Entertainer. <laughs> Cedric? Yeah. He's crazy about him. He says he has style. No, with the, the computer stuff, I, I always... Who did him. you jack to? Who did I do? Well, I was thinking like of a... Uh, uh, what's her name? Um, Lena Horne? <laughs> Lena Horne? <laughs> She's 90. So? Oh God! What is her name? Uh, from uh, what was the movie uh, American Beauty? Wow. Now, Annette Benning. <laughs> Not Annette Benning. The other chick, the chick who flashed in the window. Kevin Spacey. <laughs> Kevin Spacey, the one chick who. Thora Birch. Thora Birch. I, I, oh my God! She she was seventeen in that movie. <laughs> So you're a, you're a kid jacker. You like to jack your children. Not a kid jacker. It's just it just kind of happened. I wasn't it wasn't were you planned. That she was in elementary school and you came running in, <laughs> opened your coat, jacked on her and ran. Hell no. What did you dream about? That you lived uh, next door to her. <laughs> no. And she was it pulling just, her shirt up. Are you fucking filmed her? Or <laughs> were you sold pot to her dad? <laughs> What's going on? First of all, he remember he opened this to. 
uh, you know, old conquest to now a movie. Yeah, yeah. That, he See stumbled the day through the birch. Yeah, he John stumbled from through Cincinnati that. lies about everything. Why am I going to lie? About, I'm not lying. You were tripping I, over the old relationships just a second ago, and suddenly now we're at the American Beauty Girl. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of things that I mean, you're not necessarily thinking straight when you're. you're what are you, what are you, you drunk with your passion? <laughs> Who isn't thinking straight? So you're just running from one image to the next. It's just a series of images. I'm not really focused on one thing. Show okay. us your technique with your hand. Show us your technique. <laughs> yeah, you don't have to do it to yourself. Just show us. No, I will. I use my left hand because I'm left-handed. Uh, and, and right, uh, you said your right thumb's always up your ass. Why you do that? <laughs> not up my ass. Yeah, Good you move. A finger in your ass. Jerk it. You know, this is so embarrassing. It's just like you just you just go. You know what I mean? You just no, we have no it, idea. Like, let it rip. Oh, look at him! Yeah. Oh, he's this got to come up in the media. Like I said, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> now I was I was asked. I did not want to, but I was asked. Did you use any lube? No, I did not use any lube. All right. Um, I got this from somebody's wife. Someone's wife has sent this in. Okay. I heard ja uh, Earl Jack soft the stalkers Patty's rendition of Because the Night while crying. <laughs> <laughs> Hell no. Why not? Hell no. Are you banging Thora Birch, or is it just actually Thora Birch in American Beauty? I mean, are, are you That's a porn to him. <laughs> he hides that from his mommy. <laughs> In his fantasy, Earl is naked and covered in rose petals. <laughs> was, again, it was just the, it was just the image that popped in my head. That's all. But yeah, but was it just the image of her? How long did it take you? Uh, like I said, when you're not exactly thinking straight. Maybe ten minutes. I don't know. I honestly don't know. <laughs> I, I wasn't timing it. Why are you screaming? No, because what everyone's... What the fuck is wrong with you that you just scream out in the middle of the show? No, everyone's everyone's laughing and everything. I'm like... We're I, laughing I'm, at you. Yes, I understand that, but I don't... You don't Don't think take about it personally. Things. We're laughing at you. And your inability at age 39 <laughs> to be able to function as a human being. And since you don't do it that much, you think that this would be a memorable moment for you. Like you'd remember exactly what happened. But you're just tripping over all like the specifics of it. You would have thought it shot out a light bulb. Tom, you're on a Hey guys, what's going on? Yeah. I think it was Jack and Delilly. Mm. Ooh. Maybe if she was with Jonathan, he would jack to that <laughs> happily. Daniel, you're running Fez. Hey, what's up, guys? Yeah. Hey, man, it's Savannah, Georgia. You consider that a city? No, it's not a city, it's what? a town. Hey, Earl, why are you not getting no pussy, man? <laughs> Earl answered Daniel from Savannah. <laughs> I mean, it's harder, it's harder to fucking get a DUI than it is to get some pussy. I don't get it. <laughs> Truth is, I don't get out much anymore. That's it. Well, really. It's harder to get a DUI than pussy. pussy. <laughs> it's fucking hysterical. What's up? No, I just I shut down. I just kind of shut myself down. I don't go out as much as I used to. I don't. I'm not. You're out every. You're weekend. asexual. Uh, period. Fine. And I'm not it's a. Okay. And, I'm, and I'm not a. I'm not as social as I used to be. But you aren't getting pussy then either. I understand that, but I'm so, just not, I'm not, and I'm not, I don't consider myself asexual at all. What, wait, why is his mic so fucking high and mine so low? Yeah, he, I feel, I sound like I'm in the bottom of a goddamn, um, gorge here, and he's just screaming over us. Now, Earl, don't act like somehow you lost the step. When you were 20, you weren't getting chicks. When you were 25, you weren't getting chicks. When you were 30, you weren't getting chicks. 35, 40, 45. It ain't happening for you. You've made a choice. You're asexual. Just come on and say, I'm Earl, the a one of four asexual guys attached to the Ron and Fez show. I don't think my love life has sucked, but I'm not, I don't, again. You I don't. slept with how many women in your life? Four. Four. And, and you were 37 years. One of them bat shit and saying that you got out of the nut hut mm. if that ever happened <laughs> since not one of us saw her we only heard the Earl thing mm -hmm. so as far as legally you've been with three women and you don't think that that's bad for a single guy it's not like you got married to 24 Earl I mean, it's not great at all I, I'll openly admit that I'm, but I don't consider it because of asexuality at all why do you consider it you're a good-looking guy. You got a great job. You live in New York City where there's nothing but broads. Yes, understandable. But I just, I just, 
it just hasn't worked for me at all. Ninety nine point nine percent my fault. Yes. And um, what was the other uh, fault go to? Um. <laughs> well, the other point is me too. It's all me. Uh, here's Pete. Pete, you're on Fez. Yeah, I better heard uh, Earl Jackson the old episodes of Batman and Robin, the Earth a Kid. Earl. Oh, Jack is the Earth a Kid. Here's uh, the drunken leader. Leader, how are you, buddy? All right, how's it going? Good. I think Earl's lying. He was jacking to Aunt Jemima from the Pancake Box. I saw him. Wow, that's disgusting. <laughs> if true, that's disgusting, Earl. Not true. Don't make your own batter, Earl. Earl, I don't know where the lies start and where the lie ends. I've never heard a guy that I didn't believe say he jacked off and then <laughs> his friends go, no, you didn't. <laughs> You're asexual. I don't even, what, it's something that, you know, it, even though it's normal, it's stuff that, like stuff like that, I don't open about. All right, the other about. people on the list that he grew, uh, that he wrote as his thesis for his summer <laughs> internship. He's turning this in? And he aced it. He turned it into me and he oh. aced it. Send him home with a big A. And a big A! No. <laughs> Uh, for asexual but uh, do you now if you think of the other three names on the list then you should be able to do you agree with them Earl if you take yourself out of it do you think there's at least three other asexuals on the run of Fez show uh, I would say at least two okay two I would go two, two. Hmm. wow this is an embarrassing show. I'd like to know, yeah. um, like, was he on a couch? Was he on a bed lying down? I, I mean, just give... Some... Dave needs this for his own jerking yeah, yeah, fantasy. Yeah. Why do you need to know this? Thing? Why not? Because he wants exactly. to know. He's yeah. saying whether you're telling the truth. I mean, what, I, this, this you thing, things I feel really uncomfortable Come on, talking you about. You feel uncomfortable <laughs> about any sexual stuff because I, I you're do. asexual. I, I mean, I do. <laughs> Here's everybody <laughs> found your music, Jeff. How are you, Jeff? <laughs> Hey guys, do you know this Earl talks about jacking like he talks about drinking, like someone who's seen it on television but never actually did it Right. Himself? And I know that you faked the drinking, Earl. I know it for a fact. It's like, it's like, Earl, you can't think straight while you're jacking? What are you thinking, gay? Oh! Thinking, oh, no. oh, Foundry Music Jeff <laughs> drops him in the first <laughs> round. It's Ouch. a fucking great line. That's right up there where it's, where it's harder to give the UI the pussy. <laughs> <laughs> what is so confusing to you during your masturbation? <laughs> you can't tell how long the J.O. is. It's ridiculous. Like, time freezes. I'm not standing there like, when I want to stop watching on or anything. Well, I mean, if I say, how long are your showers, you'd be able to tell me immediately. About ten minutes. Yes. <laughs> About. <laughs> yes. It's ten minutes for him to eat a sandwich. All right, thanks, Jeff. Peace. See ya. All right, Earl, these guys are dropping you one after another. Like, uh, uh, Jeff, uh, well, Jeff, he, when he went to the uh, medieval times. Uh, is this you with a comeback? <laughs> I'm trying. Well, he, All right, let's hear your big comeback on Jeff. Well, Jeff, when he wore the, uh, he bought this, like, the helmet and this little talus or something like that. We're all waiting for the so line. He looked, no, he was trying to do stuff from, like, the 300. I was like, somebody missed a couple of training sessions. That's it. That was the most asexual joke I've ever heard <laughs> in my life. I didn't say it was great. But you're actually... But why bring it up on a radio show that you thought you had a witty line three days ago? Was it three days ago? Was that, that Medieval Times ago? was a nightmare, and I'm not paying the 50 now because I, of that joke. I need it. You, you, owe, me a, you owe him 100 Someone. Well, you does. gave me the... T you technically gave me the ticket, mm. so I wasn't obligated to... Why don't I do this? Why don't I line you up with a date with a guy, just to see? Not going out with a guy. I'm not attracted to the guys at all. Bullshit. Since <laughs> the uh, gang of four does not seem to be attracted to women, would it be a wrong thing for me to line up dates for the gang of four? Just to go out one night with a guy and see how it goes. To see how it works. Yeah. Maybe that's your thing. I'll tell you right now. I'll be extremely uncomfortable. I'm not You're extremely uncomfortable with a woman and extremely uncomfortable by, uh, by yourself jacking off. You're an uncomfortable guy. That is your level of comfort. Uncomfortability. I mean, I have some insecurity issues, yes. Mm. But I'm not going out with a guy. Not how do you all. know? Not You've never tried it. I don't, the, I don't want to try it. But you're not going no, out with anyone. Why no can't you say to yourself... 
I don't know what I'm attracted to. Why not try a I guy? No, yeah. does, I mean, does I'll, that sound fair, Fez? That sounds totally fair. I went out with Earl to the movies the other night. We had uh -oh, a great time. Oh, enough said. I knew it. I missed it. I knew it. And let me guess. That's the night he jacked off. <laughs> 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 Thinking about was, Fez's dick sticking through popcorn. And that was such a date because he w he got there late, so I ended up buying the tickets and the refreshments. What movie did you guys say? We went to... Fuck Boys 2? <laughs> <laughs> the new Don, uh, Don Cheadle movie. Talk to me. Talk to me. Mm. I knew the asexual Beatles would just pair up. <laughs> sure they would. I, I can feel I who think they we are. found writing partners. <laughs> we found the John and Paul. Wait a minute. I'm on that list? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Let's not even joke about it. Let's, <laughs> right. put it Let's put it out there along with your shrink. Have you told her yet? Um. Yeah. Yeah, I have. What'd she say? Gay? No, she didn't say that. No, she didn't say that. I think when you get over that phase, you're going to get over the bridges. You think so? Yeah. Jeff Bridges. <laughs> <laughs> and, of course, uh, I hate to say this, but Nico also involved. Uh -huh. As well as the Velvet Underground, which just shocks me. I have my suspicions. It shocked me because I, I, I forgot that he was with the show still. Oh, yeah. oh. Just uh, I had some awkward alone time with him on Monday, uh, where we both came into work and we didn't realize that the show was canceled. Uh huh. Great, uh, thanks for calling them, boys. You're doing a great job. So uh, we had kind of an awkward moment where we were kind of stuck together in that small office for a long period of time, and just kind of wouldn't let me leave for a while. He just really wanted to sit and talk. Oh jeez. And then tried tried to talk about women. He really just wasn't interested. Yeah. Kept talking about Incubus. <laughs> yeah, and any time when like a guy is more interested in rock than girls, I'm looking straight at you, Earl. Asexuality. When I like girls, I like rock, yes, but not more than girls. <laughs> he likes the rock of love. Sorry, Brett Michaels. Let me say this. Have you been to more concerts or laid more? Oh, I've been to more shows. But Thank you. <laughs> and there's not a single fucking guy in America, unless you're Bon Jovi. And even he's probably fucked more <laughs> than he has. And I'm saying all together. Not fucked more women than more shows, but literally got laid, even if it was by the same girl. You've been to more shows, and you know it's true. Oh, I'm not, I'm not disputing that at all. I've been to tons of shows. <laughs> that means nothing. Normally, if you're in a relationship, you fuck the girl seven times the first day when you ain't got that love thing going on. You can't stop it. I understand that. It's just, again, I, I, got, See, that's I have my why, problem. That's why I can't buy his social isolationism uh, bit that I think he heard me say before because he does go out. He's never home. He does go to a lot of shows. So he John's from Cincinnati. You're a fucking actual weirdness. Yes, the fact that I what? do stay home. I he mean, does I, isolate. Well, I've gone to sh I've gone to tons of shows. I haven't gone to one recently. I haven't gone. I can't even remember you're, the last show I went. What's that even mean? That's not the point, Earl. Come on, you retard. But you're always in the city, is what I'm saying. You're never you're just sitting holed Wait, up I, in your apartment in Queens. But he's in the studio, holed up. He'll mm. be sitting in the studio at eleven o'clock at night. Wait, I'll go. He's when a I, wacky when fucker. I, go, I don't go. I don't go. I don't go to clubs. I don't go to bars. Oh, I met girls on the subway, Earl. We've had birthday parties every week this month, or every week in July. And, wait a minute, let's go back to that. We go to all the, the best parties. We have the best friends. And, without a doubt, when I said to everybody, hey, uh, how did the medieval times stay? Everyone said, you know what? It was so much fun. Everyone threw themselves into it, but Earl. Then I'd hear... Everyone had fun but Earl. <laughs> Earl tried to jump out of a picture. And I hear that about everywhere we go, that you're not throwing yourself in and having fun. Wait a minute, I, I wore the hat. I, wore, I, I got the flag that they gave us. I waved Anthony the flag. Anthony bought the flag for him, Mr. B. He bought the flag for the whole row because everyone was just well, pa we were so passing flags around. Don't say you went out around. and got it. Anthony I didn't was nice enough to buy you a it. flag like you were an infant. I didn't say I went out and got it. I just said that when I was handed the flag. I Charlie, you're on my fez. Yeah, I got a question for Black Fez. Um, do you have to find yourself in a relationship before you have sex, or can you have it casually? Could you have a one night stand? Um, having, I've never had one. Mm. I can, I couldn't say if I can or I can't. I never had one. Well, fork up the money, buddy. You can do it. You want to pay for pussy? Never. No. I would Why never. not? What if I paid for you? No, I would just feel. I would feel uncomfortable. What if we go seriously? Hi. We fucking really fine. I'm talking about some $900 pussy for you to feel like a man. 
What'd you do it? And then I have her on the show the next day to explain how long it took you to get it up and why you started crying. Uh, what, really high end? F high end for around here. When I say high end, I mean west side, not fucking lower east. Oh. Yeah. Here is, uh, here's Mike. Mike, you're on my face. Hey, don't lie, Earl. We know you're jacking a muni. <laughs> <laughs> don't even joke about that. That was my, that was like a father to me. Ew. He was a, like a father to <laughs> the me. The father who molested you? No. <laughs> Were you ever molested? No, but was not. You seem like it. Fez, were you ever molested? No. I have you, no memory of being molested. You seem like it also. I was never touched inappropriately, no. Yeah. Dave? He was molested. Yeah. Without question. What about Fez? Fez was molested as well. Yeah. There's 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 no doubt in my mind. I'm not I'm not kidding around. I know. It's fucking obvious you're not kidding around. <laughs> we well get you're wrong, it. Dave. Do you guys ever really try to think back if you, you were molested? I have tried to think back. Yeah. Yeah, I have tried to think back because I'm a person who will hold on to a bad memory. You know? You know? Yeah, you almost take the you almost act like the time you got squirted with a hose <laughs> as being molested and it was nothing. <laughs> <laughs> It was something to me. It was humiliating. Actually, none of your even abuse stories have ever impressed me. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I was... Because you think you were abused as a kid, right? I totally think I was. Yeah. Be because you got yelled at and a little spanking. Yeah, because I was, yeah, just shrieked at constantly and hit by that crazy woman. You mean your mom? Yes. Oh. To me, it just sounds like she acted like a mom. I mean, yeah. maybe because you've never had kids, but most of the time you're yelling at them, it's, get down! <laughs> Stop running in the street! You're not yelling at them, you're trying to fucking save them. Oh, but I had a, I thought I had a pretty good childhood. I was very low key. I was very quiet and low key. Cause but you had a lot of sisters, and they must have teased you about your little dick, I think. No, because they because were Because so girls will do that. No, but they were so much older. I mean, like... I know, but they used to bathe you and stuff. And no, not at all. We were very... We, all of us were very self-sufficient. We were very independent people. You bathed That's yourself. That's not exactly a family, is it? Our family was all went in their own <laughs> way. I mean, that sounds sad. <laughs> really? Sad. Does. I mean, we were close, but... Doesn't sound like it. We were we were extremely close. I mean, it was odd because my, my mom would always... She would Blow always, you. <laughs> she would always pair us up. Pair you up. Like she would pair and then make you, And then she and your dad would watch as you <laughs> little pairs were no, forced. Like, I didn't know, Earl. Come here, hug. Like, it's like, uh, not your fault, like Earl. We, like in various groups, like she paired us up according to age. So my brother and I, we were very close. Because we were oh. Very close yeah. This is like an R. Crumb. Did you ever take a bath with your brother? Yeah, when we were little babies, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And that used to bother you that his hog was so large and yours was so tiny? I never looked at his hog, no. You never saw your brother's penis? Never, like, directly looked at it and just admired it or, or cringed Who said it. admired it? Yeah. I just yeah. said saw it. First you went to, I didn't see it, to now, I don't admire it. Who? I, just, I, wasn't, I wasn't looking at it. That's all I was saying. Do, you know, eventually when you guys are old men, do not give the eulogy at his funeral. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I always admired. I I just here's a picture of you at medieval times that was sent to me by my pal talk spy, and this looks like a man forced to put a crown on his head. That you look like you're at a funeral. And he didn't even take his baseball hat off. Oh, the Earl was sitting well, on top of his Yankees hat. Well, initially I took the hat off, but I had no real place to put it without wrecking the shape of it. So I put it look miserable. And I saw guys walking around with the hat. How about the one hundred hat table where I, everyone else put their thing? Wait a minute! Did everybody forget the great joke he got out on Founder <laughs> Music? Jeff looks like someone missed some training sessions. I thought that was a photo of King Booker. Now print it, uh, Dan. <laughs> Whoops, let me try yeah. again. Dan, hey. you're on the Run of Fez show. Hey, what's going on, guys? Yeah. Hey, you know, I got friends just like Earl. I, you know, I'm not I'm not trying to make a dig or take a shot on Earl or make a joke or anything, but I think he's gay. I mean, he can't jack off because he feels bad because he's thinking about men because of his religious background, you know? Yeah. He can't have sex with women because it disgusts him. He's got to be gay. You're wrong on all counts. All I, Earl, guy. you will never marry. I'm not going to say I'm never going to marry. I you want to marry. You will never marry. I want to marry, but 
at this point, I'm not men. Well, Vermont. <laughs> in, I want to marry a woman. Yes, I have. I have every intention and every desire to marry a woman. Who Thor Birch? <laughs> there. Your mic sounds awful, by the way. No, she's just like that oddly hot. I like that. I dig that. She was underage in that film. <laughs> she was eighteen. No, she wasn't. No, she, she was seventeen. Wasn't. Sure, because I'm positive. Because I thought she was eighteen. Because that way she could do the scene. No, her parents had to sign for it. It was a very big deal at the time. You're too busy fucking spanking off like Chester Molester, <laughs> a black pedophile. I was under the impression she was of age. Mm hmm. Officer. The one time you jack off and it's sick. That's the sad thing. Uh, here is. Uh, let me go to T Bone. T Bone, you're on the Run Fez show. Hey guys, great show. I just have a quick question. What do you think will happen first? Fez driving over a bridge or Earl having sex? Uh, Fez, you, you don't like to drive over bridges. The last one, I think it was last year you called me to talk you through. Yeah, as, as I got closer and closer to it, yeah. I'm like, please get me on the phone, you know, please put Ronnie on. And that's how Earl is with pussy. As he gets closer <laughs> and closer to it, he feels the need to call me to talk him down. Hell no. I can get through that just fine. Yet you don't. I haven't lately, yes. In over a year. Oh, yeah, it's approaching a year. Wow. And even then, that was with a, a lunatic, insane asylum lunatic, that you basically raped. Before that, who was it? Uh, before that, former girlfriend. How far back we going? Um, spring of last year. All right. So it's been two years since you've uh, done anyone who was clinically sane. Uh, it was a little over a year, year and a half. Here's uh, Chris. Chris, you're on Run of Fez. Buddy. Yeah. I, what I was thinking here is is that if if Earl stopped being such a pussy that he gets some pussy, I can guarantee you that if I was a pussy like Earl, my chick would not be with me. You know, and an example of Earl being such a pussy is every time Ron pressures him on something, he backs down, always apologizing, always backing up. He never stands up for himself. That is true, Earl. You know, I've always been waiting for you to stand up for yourself. And that day you'll become a producer, I always say to Fess. When, when a mistake happens and I'm involved with it, I'll own up to it. I'm not going to back down from it. I mean, if, I, if there was a mistake that happened that wasn't my fault, I'm going to stand up for myself and say it wasn't my fault. Earl, you're not with women. <laughs> I want you to know that. Yes, I understand that. I, so I, I wake if, up you're, to it every day. if you're not a heterosexual, you're either a homosexual or asexual. I believe you're asexual. I believe I'm still very much of a heterosexual. I believe. I believe, yeah. I am. <laughs> I am. I, 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 am I, I feel weird. I feel you weird didn't having even to say jack it. off into your buddy's major. <laughs> oh, God. That's a asexual leaning towards homosexual. And he jacked off with his socks on, too. I Did guarantee you? you. Did you? Why do you need to know this? Dude? It, it is important. Did you have your it's socks important. on? It's important. No, I did not have my socks on. <laughs> so you're the barefooted jacker. <laughs> barefoot. <laughs> did you rub Let's your foot on your cock? Freaking fuck jelly and God knows All what else. All right. Well, that's something, at least. <laughs> and got blown by a dog. You know, his wife doesn't know any of those things. Don't bring them up. And yet, we never call him gay or any such <laughs> oh, That never happened. Yeah. So what? That's something. No one even is saying that you're a lunatic. We say that you're asexual. That's true. You are very defensive. I mean, Ron's just simply calling you asexual. You're right. Why are you furious? Nah, are you I, just don't, exposed? I, I just feel it doesn't fit me. That's all. It fits you to a T. I'm not going to admit to it. I won't. You won't admit the truth. I don't think it's the truth. Why am I going to admit something when I don't you believe? when it takes you a year to jack off, literally a year. a year. That is a man with zero sexuality. That's no sexuality, and Earl, no one's saying it's a bad thing. No, I mean, I, it wasn't like I had to. I didn't have the desire to. I just chose not to do it. You didn't have to fight it off. Not so much fight it off. It's like it, most guys it's, can't sleep at night if they don't come. <laughs> They'll be up all night like they missed their last cigarette. <laughs> I, mean, I just chose not to do it. I mean, you have a choice. You could do it or not do it. I chose not to do it. Why, though? Because I did not want to do it. Why? Why? That, that's the reason. I didn't want to do it. But it does not interest you, which is okay. You're asexual. It, it interests me. It's just like, you know what? 
Not a good time. Not, I don't Not a good time. time. Yeah. <laughs> for I a year? I don't want to do it. You said that for a year to yourself. That you really is myself. psychotic. I, I just said I don't want it. You have a choice. You can do something or not do something. I chose not to do it. Hi, you're on the Ron and Fez show. Hey, Ronnie D., I really appreciate you taking the time to unmask Earl's asexuality <laughs> today. This is how um, the unmasked sexism <laughs> will go. <laughs> I, I'm grateful that Chris Hansen wasn't in the studios today either, because I think Earl would definitely be getting grilled even harder than he is. Yeah, for the 17-year-old stuff, you sick fuck. Uh, it's, it's so sick, and, and uh, you guys are doing a great job. Know. Keep it up. All right, peace. You know, when I try and show Earl a porn magazine, Hustler, Penthouse, he gets really flabbergasted and almost like yells at me, put that away, put it away. Because we're in an office situation day. That's the only reason. Come on. Really? All right, here's the radio shark. I'm sure he'll shine some light on this. Go ahead, shark. Oh, don't listen to him. Don't even listen to what they're saying. No marriage till you finish college. Remember, <laughs> four bitches. It's very true, we're all so wise. You're going to wait until you get your education finished. <laughs> you took 17 years off between school and women. I hate this shark, but it was funny. And what? I just hey, made Hey, don't put yourself down. You had that great line against Foundry Music <laughs> Jeff, where you not only shut him up, but all of us going, you poor, pathetic bastard. Okay, it was bad. Here's the weird thing. All right, four come up on the asexual Beatles, and only one is panicking. Everybody oh, yeah. else accepts that they're in the asexual Beatles. <laughs> Why do you want to be like this? No, I just don't believe it. You know what? It isn't the asexual Beatles. It's the asexual monkeys, and you're Mike Nesmith now. <laughs> you act like you're too good for the asexual monkeys. <laughs> Why? Why, Mike? Because your mom invented liquid paper? <laughs> <laughs> so what? She has whiteout. Anything called whiteout. I just something that you know. It just seems like a very cold term to me, and it just doesn't. I just doesn't. I don't feel it fits me. Dustin, you're on Fez. Ronnie, you're a genius. Mm, I am. Yeah. Uh, the entire time this conversation's been going on, I've been hearing, uh, seeing punch drunk love in my head. I think Earl, the memoirs of Earl Douglas, punch drunk love. All it those sisters battering him and uh, him getting up in the middle of a conversation and smashing a sliding glass door with a hammer. <laughs> it is really true. Unit. You know what big ass pro in a storage unit with uh, <laughs> decorative plungers. And, and then, you know, Bronx Johnny is like his little the guy that works with him. <laughs> All right, hold on. Big ass prize closet. We'll get you a DVD copy of Atlantic Records, the house that Ahmet built, courtesy of Rhino.com. What was some of the music from Punch Drunk Love? There was a couple of great songs in that. Uh, I know John Bryan did the soundtrack, but I don't know the actual Well, give title. me a little bit of it. Let me hear some of it while you describe yourself. And tell us, Earl, your life is because you're a guy who goes through life with no feelings and then occasionally breaks equipment. Yeah, I'll break something when I get really... It takes me a long while to really build up that anger. When like, I, like your jerk-off. <laughs> it took you a year to build that up, and then look what you did. Tore all your fucking house apart. <laughs> Earl, you said like you don't, you don't feel comfortable with the term asexual because it's a cold term. Not because you like women or you like men. You just don't like the term. Right. So if we maybe call it something different, yeah. you can come around. Like No fucky. <laughs> You're a no fucky. <laughs> How about cum dry? <laughs> Would you feel better knowing that you're cum dry? I don't like either term. When you came, did it look like powdered milk? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was good. <laughs> Fucking Monty Burns finally coming. And again, though... There's a cloud in here. Again, no fucky won't give us the explanation <laughs> of Come why on, no fucky because didn't... Because goddamn business, Dave! Why can't you easy get punch drunk? <laughs> easy punch drunk. Don't break the door. What's going on over there? Can't do your job? No, I'm trying to do two things at once. What are the two things? <laughs> One's jerk. <laughs> and the other's hide. <laughs> All right, Earl, let me talk to you. It's the same day over and over in your life, right? There's no woman in your life, right? Yeah. There's no woman on the horizon. No, not on the horizon. No woman that you're even interested in that's interested in you. All true. And yet you also don't find yourself frustrated from that. You're not sexually motivated. 
mean, it's frustrating. I just don't, you know, act so aggressive about it. I mean, I just, it bothers me. It's definitely something Bring on my Bring the music mind. down like you're doing your job. He can't even do that. It was on a different pod. I'm sorry. Have you ever called a uh, a fucking spank phone service? No. I want you to do that and give them your credit card number. I want them to start to harass you. <laughs> and then I want you to fly out there with a phone in your hand and threaten them. <laughs> I would feel really uncomfortable doing that. Dave, what should we start doing for the asexual monkeys? <laughs> well, I think that they have to start going out to to swingers clubs. Yeah. I mean, I think that's important. Unless they just want to, you know... Do their own things. Go out together, like in, uh, have club. a picnic. Have a book club. Yeah, have a picnic, a book club, audio book club. For so Thank you. You could still be in it. I know, because that was going to require some reading. All right, the asexual monkeys. Of course, the leaders are Fez and Earl, and then the younger members, Nico and the Velvet Underground, which is really uh, odd when you think about it. <laughs> well, Nico definitely fits. Yeah, because. He is a miniature fez. The Velvet Underground's definitely our Peter Tork. Why don't we pair them up and they each have to go on a date with each other, and if that's comfortable, then maybe we know for definite that they're into each other. I don't know if they are attracted to men. I'm not sure if any of them are. Nico, come on in here. You're breaking the no-fucky code. You're a junior member. Congratulations. Oh, thank you. What an honor. But when you look up at these guys... When you look at Fez and all, do you say that's made another thirty six years? I hope thirty six. <laughs> I hope not. Earl said yesterday. Yesterday, uh, when, when Lily and I were walking to the movies, because yeah. Earl was invited but decided to go to the other studio instead and be lonely. Earl, I say. Now, how did you end up with these movie tickets? Um, it was just. It was. I don't know. I guess it was just a premiere, and you're invited. Anybody? Where'd invited. the movie tickets come from, Earl? Um, Lily gave me the offer, but she didn't tell me where they were come, where they came from. I know there was a oh, actually they came from O and A. Okay, so uh, these were movie premiere tickets. By the way, I want Fred from Brooklyn to tell his story. So everybody was out to have fun yesterday. It was a nice day and a movie premiere, and Earl didn't want to go. No, I, I I was very shocked. He's like, you don't want to wind up like me. That, oh, what? Punch drunk. <laughs> no, fucky. What does that mean? No, so you know you're joyless. No, I, I didn't want to... Well, I know I'm joyless. Not to that extent. Well, yeah. I mean, I You're just, joyless. You have no fun. I, I don't have any fun, but I had things to take care of. And she was, and Lily was very pushy with it. She was like, I need to know now. I was like, oh, well, I need, I need to know a few things before I can even go. Women seem aggressive to you, don't they? Like they have snappy pussies that could hurt shit. <laughs> <laughs> like there's teeth in their pussies. No, not at all. But she was she was just very. She was enthusiastic and wanted your company. That's not. Pushy. Does it, what makes you nervous about women? Uh, what makes me nervous about women? I get. I get. I start to project into the future. Mm -hmm. Like if I was out with somebody. I start to think about, um, all right, what happened? You know, what if I don't like this person? Mm -hmm. And I start to get nervous about the awkwardness of, like, what if this person likes me, I don't like them, and I don't want to go out with them again? And I get really nervous about the whole social dynamic of that, of, like, having to, you know, say to someone, no, I don't want to do that. Almost like there's teeth in their vagina. Yeah, grasping into me. Mm, that's more like it. Because I don't believe your first story. I don't believe that one. <laughs> Even for a second, I feel like that's made up. And if I was Elsie, your shrink, I'd say, <laughs> bullshit, let's really get into it. Elsa. Yeah. I, so I Honestly, I don't believe that. Earl, what makes you uh, nervous about women? Um, Revealing. Just kind of being... I always feel like if I reveal too much, I'll be... Earl, there is nothing in you to reveal. We have all tried through meetings to find out who you are. And as we unpeel the onion, there is nothing there. So don't worry. You've got nothing. No secrets, no hidden motivations. I've never met a guy who was less surface than you. You're almost the invisible man. It's the, only your blackness keeps you from being able to be seen by humans. 
No, there's sides to me that I just don't want to reveal. There's not one. There's nothing there. I mean, I, and I just have these issues. I always feel like I will leave myself so vulnerable and that I'll get hurt. I'm, I'm, I have a fear. You don't have to worry about that because there's nothing there. I know that for a fact. You only become the person that you're talking to. We saw it throughout this conversation. You're Zelig. You, you, I can't imagine being safer than you. You should run from, for president because you got nothing that they could hurt you with. That's exactly what I was going to say. Uh, he sounds like a presidential candidate who's just using talking points. Right. All these are like just pocket excuses. I mean, it, it just, it doesn't sound real to me. It's almost like he's landed on this planet just <laughs> moments ago. He's got no history, <laughs> no likes and dislikes. It's amazing. No fuck he was in that show V. He, he may be a lizard. So, first of all, right away, now, Nico, what scares you about women? Well, I feel like I have to. Uh, I don't know. I guess. I guess. I guess I just stop and I clam up and I don't know. It's just hard for me to communicate when I'm around. Yeah. Women. Conversation. Yeah. Now, ask me the same question. What makes you nervous about women? That they won't have the abortion when I tell them to. That's the problem. <laughs> and that's the only problem there is to have with women. That they will keep it. <laughs> Other than that, you don't have another worry in the world. I'm taking notes. Write that one down. <laughs> Abortion. If they will not listen, then suddenly you hey, find yourself... Yeah. Yeah. See, Earl doesn't even talk to girls when we're at bar nine. You know, and no. I, oh, a matter of fact, there was a woman who was had his ear sitting on the couch, hot as hell, right? Mm -hmm. And I think she, I, I, it was my first time meeting her. Earl was looking up at me and my chick with that help me look like, and the woman was drunk and just ragging in his ear. But he did not think to himself, here's a woman so drunk and vulnerable, maybe I could do something horrible to her. <laughs> And I've seen, um, you know, I am Pixie. Yeah. I've seen her try and talk to Earl uh, on a few occasions. She's fantastic. Beautiful. Yeah. And he, you give her one word answers and walk away. Yeah. I don't think that's true either. We've it talked, is true. We've talked about a couple of things. Like what? Thora Birch? No. She's, the problem is she's out of high school. <laughs> <laughs> that's not a problem for me. No, it's just. All right, let's go back over this again. What is your fear, Fez? And be honest this time. My fear with women is that I come off... I am I feel like I come off gross. That you're gross. I, I have that fear as well. Even though I hear from women all the time that you're attractive. Yeah, I don't believe that mm. for a second. What is your fear? And be honest this time, Earl. I, my fear is being, like I said, like just revealing too much. And What is your fear, Nico? And be honest this time. Uh, lack of confidence. There is only one fear to have. They will not have the abortion <laughs> That's when it. you try to talk them into it. It's that simple? So you think you're gross, Fess? Yeah. Again, I'm going to yell bullshit. He it, does not. How many times do you have to be told by attractive friends of ours that he's rugged and handsome with that beard and the I hair? Know. I know. And again, that's why I do not believe the things that he says. You can't. Yeah. You cannot believe. You know, if we've discovered anything, it's that the asexual monkeys are fibbers. <laughs> they yeah, are. It comes no. along with being asexual. They're just blatant liars. Liars. Compulsive liars. 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 <laughs> and really, the, the other interesting thing is, I don't think one of the asexual monkeys has any idea what they want. Oh, I totally agree what with that. What is wrong with just saying, I don't want anything. I'm happy with nothing. Because I believe that the asexual monkeys are. Well, I would say that, except obviously, you know, in the past months and years, I haven't been happy. Because? You know, and I, and I think maybe that has something to do with it. You do think that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Earl, why won't you just say I'm happy the way I am? Because I'm not. I'm not happy. Not, I'm, I'm definitely not happy not being in a relationship. I am so not happy. All right, I'm going to find a guy for you. Do not find a guy for me. Just well, let's with a woman. All right, I'm going to find you a perfect date. I am a heterosexual man. Give me your preferences. What Seriously, what ethnic background? Well, with women, I it doesn't matter to me, quite honestly. Race doesn't matter. Not, ethnic background doesn't nothing, matter. Doesn't Hair matter. color, size, height. You have a perfect height? Um, No, no preference in that either. Could they be okay. taller than you? 
Yeah. He could be with a seven foot woman. Yeah, he could be tall. I, if if we are compatible and we're cool and we can hang out, I don't care how big or right. small she is. Now, big cock or a small cock? <laughs> no cock, because I'm not attracted to men at all. Hmm. All right, so far all we have is Cheryl Swoops. All right, I got the pers perfect person for you, seriously. And that's Eastside Dave's brother. Oh, that's good. No, not at all. Why not? No. He loves music just as much as you do. He likes men. Just I go not. out with him. <laughs> I am not going out with Dave's brother. Come on. All right, here's from Fred, Fred from Brooklyn. He was over at this uh, movies yesterday. How are you, Fred? I'm all right. How you doing, Ronnie? Now, you got a little bit of story for us today, right? Yeah. Well, first off, great movie. I left from beginning to end. What was the movie? Yeah. Super bad. I highly recommend it. All right, that's a kid from. Is it Mike? Uh, Michael and Chuck is the name of that online uh, TV show. The kid. Shit, I, yeah. I don't know, man. I was. You talking about Andy Scamberg? Yeah. No, no, hold on. Oh, Super Bad is the a different movie. It's the fat kid from. Um, he was in Forty Year Old Virgin, and he was in some oh. other Jonah Hill. Yeah. He wears glasses. He's the lead guy in it. But his friend in that. Oh, his friends in Arrested Development. Yeah, but now his show is like Clark and Michael or something online, where they do these eleven-minute clips. I haven't seen it. It's fucking hysterical. So you like Superbad? Incredible! I laugh out loud. Funny the entire movie. It's going to be a tremendous hit, and I recommend it. All right. By the <laughs> way, uh, Casey doesn't think that Earl's good enough for Dave's brother, mm. which kind of makes me upset because I think he's good enough for any guy. <laughs> But that's me. Maybe I'm seeing him through, you know, chocolate-covered glasses. All right, so what happened when the movie's over? You had a big adventure. Oh, so we come out of the movie. Everybody's standing out on 68th Street. I'm, uh, Nico's there. S Louie's there. Smoking Nico's a joint? There. Joey, no, actually, no. I, I lit a cigar. I'm waiting outside on a populated street there. I'm nice. looking to get arrested. And uh, Dean points... And Martin Scorsese is walking in the fucking side entrance. Wow, that's oh. a big one. Nice. He, he yells out, there's Martin Scorsese. And for some reason, out of the whole bunch of them, I'm the only one that ran to go meet them. Nobody's behind me, so I go running in. I go running in the side entrance of the theater, and he's stepping in the elevator that's right near the side entrance. I jump in with him and his three assistants. I say, I can't believe I'm in an elevator with Martin Scorsese. <laughs> oh, his assistants start laughing, but the guy puts his hand out, Ronnie, to shake my fucking hand. To keep you from he pulling a gun. <laughs> 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 Incredible. Now, he's a fidget too. I know. Yeah, he's a he's, tiny, tiny man. Uh, but I've I seen him once on the street, and then once was at this kind of party slash speaking engagement. And he is uh, as anxious as you are, Fez. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, he's got a lot of social thing. He doesn't like uh, people. He, he, he likes the whole court, but he talks like this, and he talks real fast. But he's not real comfortable with people coming. That's why when I saw, saw him on the street, I just gave him, uh, you know. I loved the new film and kept going. I didn't even oh, stop. Go, going into the theater, he had his head down. Yeah. He just was on the move, man. He didn't even want to be seen. Yeah. But uh, Dean spotted him, and nobody... Lily, then, when I come out the door, Lily's... She, she did, I don't know why she didn't go in the elevator with me. I don't, she seemed like she was right behind me. Uh, she had the opportunity. Wow, but, that's big, though. Marty Scorsese. All right, let me ask you this. Uh, if you can only meet one, Scorsese or Spielberg, who do you pick? Scorsese. Does? Scorsese. Wow, that sh shocks me. Me too. Yeah. Me too. I would have went for the Scorsese. Especially since Fez has never seen any of his films and has seen all the Spielbergs. <laughs> <laughs> I just watched The Departed last night, yeah. so that's really weird. Watching it again, huh? <laughs> yeah. Loving it time and time yeah. again. <laughs> <You can't stop. laughs> all right, Fred, that's a great one. Well, Lily and Nico did get a glimpse of him, did but you, they didn't did, follow behind me. They didn't think I was going to go in. Nico, why didn't you dive in the elevator and try to harass Martin Scorsese? <laughs> <laughs> I was just overwhelmed that I was still taking it in, and then Fred just, like, bolts. <laughs> oh, my God. I bet he was petrified when you dove in that elevator. <laughs> Fred, no, you're no, such no, a no. big guy. You had to just tower over him. Well, I, I did, I, and I, and when I shook his hand, I, I mean, it was like shaking a baby's head. There yeah. was just nothing there. Yeah. But he wasn't intimidated at all. He was smiling. He was, he, he, it was great. I'm sure yeah, that I, all I, his biggest... Yeah. I bet his all of his biggest fans looked and act just like Fred anyway. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because he makes gangster movies, so <laughs> guys, you know, really rough and tumble guys are going to love those films. Oh man, it was just I, I still haven't washed that hand. Oh. It, it's incredible. Yeah, well, yeah, what can I tell you? All right. And and I did jerk off. I'm not uh, I'm not ashamed to mention it. Though. Thinking about Scorsese, Scorsese later. Hand. Yeah, not, sure. Not with Scorsese hand. Just looking at Scorsese hand <laughs> as you were jerking <laughs> yeah. off with your left. Yeah, 
<laughs> uh, Fred, what am I going to do with the asexual monkeys? I don't know, man. You know, anything in life, if you don't want it, you're not going to go and get it. I, I agree. I, every piece of pussy I've ever gotten in my life started with, hey, how you doing? Right. And from there, it just progressed and... If you don't say hi, how you doing? You have no chance. And here's the thing: you got to fucking claw for it. This is like, remember uh, in the beginning of Wall Street, how long it took to get Gordon Gecko? <laughs> That's what happens to some guys. You got to fucking get out there and play it every day. But it, if you're um, not interested, say I am not interested, and this is who I am, and people will back off. Big time. It, it sounds like there's just no self confidence or fear of rejection. I, 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 you can't have that fear of rejection. You just got to keep moving along, and it, it's out there to be had. I, and, I, I will tell you the truth. I really have started to realize this when you try to help friends with problems. What they tell you the reasons are are not the reasons. Hmm. They are a superficial reason put up there to block the real reason. And that's what slows us down from helping our friends all the time. Because mm -hmm. we believe them, and really they're just repeating back things that they've either seen in movies or heard before, but I'm not even sure if they know. Yeah, and they'll, and, and sometimes they might take your advice yeah. and just do it once and then totally forget about it. Like if right. you tell Earl, you have to go out and meet women, I guarantee you he'll do it, he'll try to do it today, Yeah. then that's it for the rest of August. That it really is true. That and do it in a way where they almost know that it won't work, so they can just disprove the theory, so they can be like, all right, so that doesn't work. So it almost makes them right in their own head. It is going to try. Thanks a lot, Fred. No problem. Thank you, Ronnie. Peace. Bye. See you, Fred. Uh, friends with Maurice Scorsese. But you got to think of it this way. It's like if you try to play a piano, and it, it doesn't come to you right away, you're like, well... That's me. I got no talent for the piano. <laughs> but guys that learn how to play the piano are guys that go and do it every single day. And then you at least get better. You're not going to turn into Rick Waitman, but you're a guy that can play some things on the piano. Then you have a passion to want to play the piano. You, yes. I, like, I tried to play guitar. I, I wasn't getting good. I just quit. Why? Right. I didn't have a passion to be a guitar player. It just doesn't seem like any of the asexual monkeys really have a passion to right. be with women. It is true. My uh, nephew... Is a great guitar player, unfucking believable. But when the kid was about 12, 13 years old till he was like 16, I swear to God, he wore a guitar around his shoulders all the time. Uh, much like Bobo, who literally is always carrying an instrument wherever he goes. That is passion. That means that he wants to do it. Hmm. The asexual monkeys, you have no passion for this other mate. Why? That's the thing to ask yourself. And if, if, if you just go... I don't like women, or sex grosses me out. I think that would be healthier than acting like, well, I got my problems. <laughs> really uh, on a dry streak lately, which I don't think you are. And I don't believe Fez's thing of being afraid to break up one day because you're able to do that with friends very, very easily. Yeah, but it's to me, it's like with the isolation thing, mm -hmm. and I bury myself in my apartment... And it's like, I feel like if I start going out, it's like, and I don't like it, I'm not going to be able to go back to that isolation thing without being hassled about it. I disagree. I mean, you uh, you had a buddy ship with a couple of people. They made you mad. You were able to go, no, that's it. I'm done. How's that any different than if you can't get along with a woman? Plus, who wants to go through life with no hassles? Well, you know, breakups are amazing. They're amazing stuff. The part of the asexual monkey's problem is that they don't want experiences in right. general. I'm telling you right now, when you're trying to leave someplace and a woman's holding onto your leg and fucking screaming and everyone's looking, it's pretty <laughs> exciting. I'm not gonna lie to you. It sounds awful. It's it is awful, but awful in a wow, that was wild. That was something I've done before. Like some of the best stories that I ever have, like when me and my friends are just like bullshitting around, is just talking about you'll never believe what this girl threw at me after right. we broke up and stuff like that. It's just life experiences. You go, you come home, oh, fucking home at three o'clock in the morning, <laughs> and this uh, bitch jumps out of the fucking bushes at you, screaming, "I'm not going to get rid of it. I don't care what you're saying." <laughs> you know, now you got something. You're alive. Earl, I don't know whether you've been alive since I've known you. Been alive? I've been more than alive. 
What do you mean more than a lie? <laughs> He's a How superhero. Are you? Okay, that came out wrong. <laughs> Captain totally America? Came, yeah, wrong. What do you I'm mean? more than a lie. Because you, you're knee-jerk lying. <laughs> no, it just came out wrong. If I've had experiences. I've had life experiences. A lot of them have been happened to be alone, that's all. Yeah, like, who are you going <laughs> to share them with? You're by themselves. No, it's just some of the weirder things that have happened to me. I happened to be alone. It wasn't something planned or anything. It just happened. So you're happy being asexual? I'm not ha I don't consider myself asexual. I'll admit I am not happy that I'm not in a relationship. Can you admit that you're not a sexual being? Yeah, at Absolutely. I can admit okay. I'm not a sexual being. That is the exact definition of asexual. <laughs> so that's okay. I mean, at this particular... I mean, not At this choice. particular time, you're asexual. At, at this point and at this particular time, am I, like, act sexually active? No, I am not at all. Or even is, turned on. I am totally turned on. <laughs> More than turned there's on. All, there's only men here. How can you be totally I'm, turned on? Not, what turned you on? Not right now. Yes, but, you just said and, that. You I mean, did... Not only have you had sex a year, you didn't jack off for a year. How turned on I mean, could you be? Like I, like I said, like I said before, like there are times I've wanted to do it, but I chose not to do it. So well, there was times when you wanted to jack off. Yes. And you're like, I'm in the mood to jack off, and then you didn't. Yes. Why? I can't explain why. I just said, you know what? You have a choice. You say yes. You say no. I said no. Do you think it's sinful? I'm going to tell you the truth. I don't think this sex thing, if you're really a sexual person, a choice plays much of a fucking place into this. Mm -mm. Sex no. is all about just going there, like right in yeah. the moment. I've always thought, not only do I have a choice, the woman doesn't have a fucking choice either. <laughs> you're doing this one way or the other. And even spanking. I mean, I can tell you, I've spanked it in Yankee Stadium. I spanked it in Statue of Liberty. It's like it just grabs a hold of you. You have to get that Earl, jizz out have of you. you ever jacked in a landmark? Uh, any kind of a national landmark? <laughs> no, I have not. All right. I'm not Asexual. going that crazy. Definitely. Asexual. Why is it crazy? I think that's just crazy to be in a, you know... We're 50,000 people, and he's like, you know, I'm going to go jerk off in the bathroom or something. That's insane. To me. Had to do it. Had to get that jizz out. Uh, here's uh, Dave. Dave, you're on Hey, buddy. Hey. Earl, do you realize you're averaging once every 10 years? You're the decades channel of getting laid. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to tell you right now, Earl. People write novels faster than you get laid. It's fucking unbelievable. <laughs> but you pick out any novelist over the last 20 years, any writer, and he's written more fucking novels than you've been laid. And that's incredible to me. It's incredible. I mean, it's true. And I'm, I, again, it's something that I didn't... I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to have sex for 10 years. That's something I didn't choose to do. It's just but you that, also don't choose, I'm going to go out and get laid. Nor are you even seem like you're looking for Miss Wright. You know, if you had some kind of religious thing tied in with it, I'd understand. I mean, I would love, to, like I said, I would like to have that one person. You know, it's been I. I had a plan. What little plan I had, I wanted to be married. I wanted to be like my father. Like by the time he was 21, he had a couple of kids. He had a house. He had a car. I had that in my mind. It just didn't work out that way. Now you missed that by 17 years. Yes, I understand. And by the that. wife, the kids, and the car. Ronnie, Earl thinks being a friend is a way to get pussy when that's exactly what a girl doesn't want. Look at Lily. He had to give her an internship. He took her out to dinner, all that stuff. He wanted to be her best friend to get pussy from her. And that's not working. So you need to figure something else out. Mm. Well, the situation with Lily was that she she was my friend. She still is. And she she wanted to do the internship. And I helped her out as a friend. You were never interested in her before. I mean, yeah, she's a, is she attractive? Yeah, of course she is. Did you ever think, did you ask her out? Um, well, that one time, I, yes, I did ask her out on, on, uh, well, yeah, I asked her out one now, time. Now, the first time I met Lily, I thought it was a date. I remember I came back to you and told you, Fez. Oh, yeah. I go, uh, you're not going to believe it, Earl was with this really cute girl who looked like she was out of Annie Hall, because she was wearing a funny hat. Right. And I'm like, uh, and then we all went out to dinner later, and, that, and he acted like it was his chick. But, you know, since then, I know four different guys she's been with, and none of them are you. That's the <laughs> weird thing. We are not putting her in the asexual monkeys. <laughs> <laughs> all right, uh, let's take a break. Give me that, Alcufez. It's the Ron and Fez show. 
Ronnie B. Fed W. The Ron and Fez Show.